in section 9.4, we get to uh, find the area of, of the different triangles. And we get to use something more than just one half base times height. So in a traditional triangle, it's one half um, the base times the height. And where that comes from is the fact that every um, triangle is really just half of a parallelogram. So if we take the most uh, simplest triangle, a right triangle, and we got the base, and we got the height, and the area is one half base height. But see, that's really half of a parallelogram. In this case, it would be half of a um, rectangle. So that's where the formula comes from, is it's the fact that uh, every, every parallelogram can be made into two uh, triangles. So a parallelogram would be like so, and it's just the base times the height, and then for half base height, right, then that would be the area of the triangle. So that's what's going on, that's what's going on with this. Um, that's just from geometry, but now we're in trigonometry. So what we can do is we can find the area of these two triangles using these formulas in this section. And the, uh, the two cases that we're gonna work with are side angle side and side side side. And we're also just working with our generic triangle here, right? Capital A, little a, capital B, little b, capital C, little c. So that's a standard in uh, geometry. So if we have side, side, and an angle in between, or we just know the three sides, we can find the area using the two formulas. The first formula that we're going to use is not this one. That's on the wrong page. We're going to use this formula right here. It's one half AB uh, sine of C and C is the angle in between sides A and B, like the picture on this other page. So I need to rip this off. This is live action editing right here. And I put this right there. Now I have this matching with that. I accidentally wrote it on the wrong page. The proof of this has to do with right triangle trigonometry. The proof is on page uh, 699, so you might want to uh, glance at that. It's not too hard to follow. And it just shows you that uh, you just take the sine of the angle and that way you can figure out what the height is. And basically you're substituting for the height, solving that off of the sine ratio. All right, so let's go ahead and use this. So this is the side, angle side. So we got the two sides and the angle in between. We can use this formula to find the area. So here we go. What's the area of this triangle? K. Uh, why are they using K? That's a good question. Uh, question doesn't start with K, it starts with Q. So anyway, uh, one half A would be 15. It doesn't matter because it's uh, commutative, so you can do it in either way. 15 times 21, and then sine of the angle in between. So sine of 30 degrees. <clears throat> Make sure your calculator is on um, degrees instead of radians. So we just type this into yield calculator. So it's 0 0.5 times 15 times 21 uh, sine of the angle in between 30 uh, degrees. So the area for this would be 78.75. <clears throat> now there's a second situation that we can deal with, and that's side, side, side. We don't even need to know any of the angles. This formula is known as Heron's formula or Hero's formula, and there's kind of an interesting description of this in the book. Um, and the proof of this has to do with the law of cosines. So that proof is on page 700. So if you look on page 700, and then there's a historical feature on page 701, which is actually worth reading. Um, this go this formula goes all the way back to what does it say? The first uh, century AD. So this goes back uh, almost uh, 2,000 years ago. So that's that's pretty cool. Geometry is older than algebra. And um, so all we need to know is is this. Now this is the same this is the same uh, triangle as in the last one. So the area of this should be pretty close to 78.75 uh, square units of area. 
because I'm, I'm just using the same triangle. I'm doing the the 30 and the 15 and the, the 21. But this side is 11, so I'm not going to use the, the angle of 30 degrees right there. So for this one here, um, you have to, it's kind of a long formula, but basically you just need to know the lengths of the three sides. And you just uh, subtract those from the uh, perimeter, half of the perimeter. So A plus B plus C would be the perimeter, and then we divide it by 2, and that's S. And you just put S there, put the A's and B there, take the square root of it, and it should be really close to 78.75 because it's the same triangle as the last one. Okay, so we need to figure out what S is in this problem. So we're, at, we're doing 1 half of 15 plus 11 plus 21. And what the heck does that equal? Uh, to, to, to make sure I'm on the screen here. 15 plus 11 plus 21 is equal to 47 divided by 2. Uh, 23 and a half. So S is 23 and a half. So K is the area, square root. Uh, 23.5 is S. 23.5 minus A. So we'll just do the, the sizes in, um, there's no order. It can, it can be A, B, C, or C, B, A, you know, it's all multiplication. So I'm just going to go large, smallest side to largest side, just so I can keep the order. So I'm going to do 11 first. Uh, then we're going to do 23.5 minus 15. And then uh, 23.5 minus 21. So I just type all that into the calculator and... I get take the square root of it and I get the answer for that. It should be really close to this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and type this in. Uh, second square root, or you could put the square root in later, um, whichever you prefer. Uh, 23.5 and then parentheses 23.5 minus 11. I probably could have done that in my head. Oh well. Uh, 23. 0.5 minus 15, close the parentheses, parentheses, uh, 23.5 minus 21, minus 21. The biggest, like I said, the biggest thing here is like, am I typing everything incorrectly? So I'm going to scan back over it to make sure that I typed it in because there's a lot of numbers I could have missed there. So there's S. So the formula is right here. So it's S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. Mm, so it's 23 and a half, 23 minus 11, minus 15, looks good, minus 21. All right, and here's the, here's the defining moment. The answer should be really close to this one that we just did because it's the same triangle. Now, it may not be exactly the same because I'm taking the square root, so it's not going to be uh, go right to this uh, two decimal places because it's going to be an irrational number versus a rational number, but it's going to be really close. 79. So 79 uh, versus that, we're off by a quarter. And the reason why is because these sides here um, don't make that be exactly a 30 degree angle. That angle is a little bit off from 30 degrees. And I just did this to keep the numbers whole. That's why, because that's really not a 30 degree angle. Um, so if that's a 30 degree angle, then that's, that side there really is not exactly 11. It's different from 11. So that's why, where the discrepancy is. But you can see that each formula uh, works. All right. So here we are um, with the exemplary problems. Number seven is first. And I'm going to use this formula right here, the one half the two sides and sine of the angle in between. So number seven is the exemplary problem. So the area it just asks us to find is one half. It's the two sides angle in between. So the two sides are two and four, and then sine of 45, 45 degrees, not 40 degrees. Good thing I got my tape right here. Forty-five degrees. And we just type that into the calculator. Mm -hmm, 0.5 times 2 times 4 times sine of 45. Okay, so the area of this is 2.83. All right, you do number 9 now. So you got the two sides and the angle in between. 
So go ahead and put that in the calculator, come with the answer, check your answer in the back of the book. All right, number um, 11 and 13. 13 is the exemplary problem. So uh, they're the same, that's where you know the three sides. So let's go ahead and do number 11 together and then you can do the exemplary problem and check your answer. So this is the three sides. So now we're using um, Heron's formula, which is this guy right here. Remember what S is, it's the half the perimeter. So we don't wanna say things like it's A plus B plus C divided by two. We wanna say half the perimeter because I think that's an easy way to remember what S is. Um, so the first thing I want to do in number 11 is figure out what S is. It's half the perimeter. So it's 6 plus 5 plus 8. And let's see. Hmm. Yep, that's, that's right. So that's 11, 19, half of 19. 19 divided by 2 would be 9 and a half. That's what S is. Sorry, I had a pause, pause moment in my brain. So now we're doing the K. So K is equal to the square root, 9.5. And then it's each one of the uh, S's, 9.5 minus each one of the sides. I'll just write them down in this order since they're right there, 6. 9.5 minus 5 and 9.5 minus 8. All right. And we type this into ye old calculator. So second square root, this is probably the hardest part of this, 9.5. Uh, left parenthesis, 9.5 minus 6. Parenthesis, parenthesis. 9.5 minus 5, parenthesis, parenthesis, 9.5 minus 8, parenthesis, enter. So 14.98, two decimal places. So 14.98 is the area of that, that it matches. Um, so now I want you to do the exemplary problem, which is number 13. So there we go, the exemplary problem. So you do that one and we're good. All right, all of these problems here, the first six um, have the angle in between and the next six are the three sides. So they're, they're the same problems, they just don't have a picture associated with them. Now, um, this will probably turn into like uh, one of those quiz thingies I've been doing, but how do you know that it's the angle in between? That's the question. So we know that these are the three sides, but how do you know it's the angle in between? Well, we go back to our, our triangle. And our basic triangle here. So angle A, capital A, is between B and C. So, if you ha so it's really A, B, C. C capital C is between the little two, right? So it's still ABC. B is between these two, so it's ABC. So no matter what you do, right, it's ABC. And if you go here, it's ABC. And if you go here, it's ABC. So let's check all of these out. Is it ABC? ABC, so that's the one in between. ABC, that's the one in between. ABC, that's the one in between. A, B, C, A, B, C, or A, B, C, and A, B, C. So on 20, right, angle A is, is would be right there, right? And then it gives me B and C, B and C. So it just it has a different, you know, shape to it because that's 120 degrees and that's not 120 degrees, right? But these, the, that's the way this is given. So you could make a picture for each one of these. So you're more than welcome to try any and all of those and, and check your work. But they're all basically just like the first ones that we did. I think this section's pretty, pretty straightforward. Let's now look at an application problem. Okay, in this problem here, we have a bonus formula. Whoa, bonus. Uh, angle, side, angle. So if we know angle, side, angle, we can um, also find the area. 
And it says, um, use the law of science to show. So they, that's the question. You're supposed to use the law of science to show that this actually works. And um, then there's the other two versions of it. So what are we talking about here? So we know um, two angles, which means you're going to know the third angle. So all you need to know is um, three angles and one side. Because if you know two angles, you know the other angle, right? Now, what, what you notice here on this formula is if you know A, little a, then it's a sine of A down there, and then that's the other two angles, okay? So if we were doing um, oh, one of these problems here, which would be lost my paper. So, so on this number 29 here, so K would be A squared. So we have A squared, which would be 2 squared. And then sine of B, sine of B would be 20 degrees, right? And then sine of C, um, sine of C, well, we know the other angle, right? Because that makes 60. So the other angle is 120. And then, um, the 2 sine of A, sine of 40. So basically, this plus this plus this has to be 180 degrees on this formula. That makes sense? It should. And then um, the angle the angle down here has to match the side up there. That's how I would interpret this formula. The angle down here has to match the side up there. So we just type all that into the calculator and we would get the answer. So, um, so it'd be four parentheses, four sine 20, close the parentheses, parentheses, sine 120, close the parentheses, parentheses divided by um, parentheses, two sine 40 degrees. And the area is 0 0.092, 0 0.92. All right, so you have to do a little calculation here, right? But the main thing is you have to have the side and the angle, right? The side goes on the top, the angle goes on the bottom. So the side goes on the top, the angle goes on the bottom on number 33. The side goes on the top, the angle goes on the bottom, and so then the uh, 10 to 10 or the sine of 100 and sine of um, 70 would be on the top, right? So that plus that plus that, those are opposite. So that's how that formula works. Um, go ahead and and try try one of the other ones and see what see what you come up with there. Try an odd problem and see if you get the right answer. So 37 is an application question. We have a triangle, triangular lot, and it's 50 feet one way, uh, 75 feet another way, and 100 feet this way. So it's feet on each side of the triangle. Now, um, uh, it kind of looks like a right triangle. I didn't mean for it to be. I just needed something to kind of like get my juices flowing here on this one. I'm going to use Heron's formula to find this, and then I'm going to figure out how much it costs because it's $3 per square foot. So I just take my answer and multiply it by 3. So I need S, which is half the perimeter, one half of 150, 225. So half of 225 is 112 and a half, 112 and a half. There we go, and I just plug it in the formula. So K is the area, square root of 112.5, and then 112.5 minus the 50 side, and 112.5 minus the uh, 75 side, and 112.5 minus the 100 side. Type this in yield calculator. Um, second square root 112.5 parentheses 112.5 minus 50 
12.5 minus 75. 1, 12.5 minus, oops, minus uh, 100. Okay, I'm going to skim back through it to make sure that I didn't type anything wrong. Up oh, there. Okay, so it's 18, 18.15, and then I need to, it's, that's three dollars for each square foot, so I times by three, and I get 5,000, um, 5,000, four hundred and forty six dollars and thirty eight cents Woohoo! I just bought myself a rectangular lot okay this one is for you to try um, the dimensions of the home plate and uh, this is major league baseball so these are the dimensions of the home plate and we're supposed to find the area of home plate so how would you do this um, there's lots of different ways that you could do this but if we're using this section here, what I would do is I would draw a line across here. And I would say that this is 17 inches. So I have 17, 12, and 12. So I can use Heron's formula to find the area of the top. And then the area of the bottom here is just a simple um, multiplication of, of length times width. Uh, you could do... You would know the angle in between, so you could say this is 45 degrees, right? Because it's a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. Um, so, oh, well, no, we don't know that it's a 45 degree angle, so that would be not true. We don't know that. We just know that it's 17 inches from there to there. Uh, that's not, it looks like a right angle, but I cannot assume that. That's bad, bad, Mr. Jackie, bad, bad. Slap my hand. Bad. Bad. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's a 45 degree angle. No, we don't know that. We don't know that. We, we'd have to do uh, like the law of uh, signs or something like that to figure out what that angle is. Um, so basically, split it up into two parts and see if you can get the correct answer for that. The next question I think that's worth trying, it's kind of fun, is number 44. You um, can't check the answer for this one in the back of the book, but I can give you a ballpark answer for it and it's number 44 it's the Bermuda Triangle so it tells you the different cities and places and the number of miles uh, between them um, so we're ignoring the curvature to approximate the area of the Bermuda Triangle so that's where all the, the things disappear um, it's pretty close it's it's uh, between 400 uh, thousand square miles and, and 500,000 square miles. So if you know that you have a ballpark answer if you if you have that right, and I'm sure you can do it. And that concludes the video for the area of a triangle.